So uh, last time we were doing this, we actually finished writing it out, but I, I don't know that we need to do all of this. It feels like a lot of practice. It feels like something that, that you could just do. Um, I don't know, let's see if we can, does someone wanna just uh, bang it out really quick? I might do it like this actually, I might just cheat. Okay, who wants to tell me the articles? Put someone on article duty and just go all the way to the bottom. Okay. Aurelia, you go on it? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. So today, <laughs> let's make that a P or PA. So. Sorry, it, it just uh, it just crashed the file. No worries. All right, so let's go back to party. So, par bird, olive bird, that will be it. Next one, uh, year is, well, doesn't matter that it's female. So, let's make it an N, an R. Yeah. No? I was thinking, so there's different ways of writing this. I've been writing it with, uh, with Z3 afterwards. Wait, not Z3. Was that Z3A? Yeah, Z3A. It's not strictly necessary, actually, to put that plural marker. You could also just write na. Um, I wonder if I should include that in here. Hmm. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. True. You see that a lot. List. Yeah. Right. Next one, pa. Oops. Off. Uh, pa, also for the silver. Oh my gosh. Okay. What? This is annoying. Yeah, why? why is this happening? I hope it's saving all the things I'm putting in before it crashes. Maybe it just doesn't like me typing in Egyptian for some reason. Yeah, it's saving it all uh, the time. As That's I good. know, it is, co it is completely automatic uh, saving, auto saving. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. we're going to give up on this. We're going to give up because uh, this oh, is just not. Sucks. Maybe you can just download it and uh, screen share. Maybe it is the solution of the problem. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to do it like this. Perfect. Let's just do the. Uh, let's just do the transcript. This part you got right. You can just say it out loud. Okay. Where do we continue? Up here. Okay. Yeah. Let's so, go up here. Pa, pa, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I guess that's it. Yeah. Um, again, pa, pa, nu, I guess, N, W. Yeah, that's it, pa, nu. Pa, ra, so, pa, er, ein, er, ein, yes. Pa, ren, pet, so. Oh, sorry, plural, na, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. Ah, ren, pet, yeah, and does it have a, oh. Oh, it's going to crash now. Gonna crash if I do that. I really want to do that. Yep, makes sense though. Okay, next one. Na and then Hanu, I guess. H, Aleph, N, W. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Pa, um, So, yep, there you go. Um, again, pa and then Chet. So, yep. There's a D at the end, I think. There we go. You sure? Hmm. It's a uh, second oh, D. Oh, ah, dang. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, red then, and again, pa. So pa, red. Yeah, and this one is illustrating the fact that just ending in a T usually indicates that something is feminine, but this one is. Um, you know, exceptionally masculine, but the T is part of the root itself. So the plural, you know, in Middle Egyptian, if we want to say the plural of het, it would be hetu, mm, right? Sense. Not hut, right? Pa zip or pa zip. So, yep, there you go. This one should be, I guess, biru or something, or is there no S, S in there? That's what I'm not sure about. Is that? Oh. 
S P R W. That's it. Got it. Okay, I'm 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 glad to see that we're you know making an effort to remember some of these because that's that means this is really <laughs> worthwhile practice. Okay. Well, should I hand over before I forget? <laughs> this one I don't recall. Is that also? I would also say sepet or something, but yeah. Okay. It. Oh, all right. Sepet, ta sepet, sechenu, and that's masculine. So pa sechenu with the dotted H. Yep, there we go. Um, is that a shedet or we shedet? I forgot. It's shed. That bilateral shed. there is shed. 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 Oh, shed it. Oh, shed it. Shed it, yeah. Got it. And the then window. this, um, how is it spelled in Coptic? Sheshot, I think. Sheshot. Something like that. Hmm. Okay. Oh, no, it's it switches gender. Sorry. In Coptic, it loses the final T and it switches, and that's what you get. But we do have a preserved. T at the end of a word, which we normally don't have in Coptic, but because there was that D T, there was actually two, two dentals at the end. Two. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Then the place. So ta is um, read leaf and oh wait, is the is the T pronounced? Is it? Yeah. Okay. Of course. It's not pronounced, but it is yeah, but transliterated. It is there. It is yeah, yeah, right. Uh, so our uh, Susan again, Zeshen. Yeah. It's masculine. It is masculine. Uh, you can make it feminine though, by making something like, um, it's the name uh, Shoshana. Right. And that is the, the, the Egyptian the Shoshen in, in, um, in Coptic. Hmm. Okay. Uh, shot. So with a ta in front, so ta. Shot. Ta shot. Good. Mm -hmm. The letter. Um, pa kiss. So Q S. I think that's it. Yep. Uh, migratory bird. Pa gashli. Okay. Yep. And this word actually does survive in a Coptic, interestingly enough. I think it's chase shot or something. Hmm. Pa gerek, the falsehood. Yep. Ata, that one still lives in Coptic, I think, as Tor. Yep. Oh boy, forgot. Anybody knows? Ah, something. I'll give you the pa for free. Uh, I'll, I'll give Chow. you the Coptic. What did you say? Ciao. Ciao, that's it. Ciao. Okay, I'm guessing. Juout, ta juout. It should be. Yeah. Pa. It's yeah. It's duat. Um, and then here, for whatever written, it's written like this. Doubt, but you know. Isn't it feminine though? Yes. Wow. Yes. It is okay. definitely is. Okay. Ta dipit. Okay. Um. Ta tim. To meet. Yeah, this is another one that switches oh, gender. <laughs> yeah, in Coptic, it's Ptima. It's, uh, it becomes masculine. All right, it's masculine, too. Jeru, mm -hmm. uh, so Pajeru. Entirety, yes. Dore, uh, uh, how do you say that? DRT, I guess, huh? Tadderet. Yeah, we can say deret, or uh, it's often transcribed jeret. Uh, and it's one of these cases where, you know, by acrophonic principle, this gives us our phonetic D, but for some reason, the word has second D in it. No, I'm going to put this. I'm going to go out on a limb here and, uh, and put that. Yeah, I feel like that's more likely to be the actual word. Um, and what happens when you have two Ts? I guess you don't ever see this. You don't really see this. Mm. Yeah, 
theory could. Okay, we could fill in the Coptic for a bunch of these. Some of these we can almost, we can yeah. kind of make up the Coptic. Um, this one we don't good. have, unfortunately. <laughs> the boat. Wait, is morning, is morning feminine? Holy. I have to look. I don't actually know. I feel like it's masculine for some reason, but I could just be misremembering it. Let's look. Does that word um, retain the meaning of afterlife in uh, late Egyptian, or does it lose uh, that meaning? No, and they're actually they're not the same word um, for a pretty long time. So the the word for the afterlife is preserved in in Greco Coptic as day, or as morning as Toei. Um, so they they seem to have been they seem to have had different pronunciations as far as you want to go back. Maybe they developed different pronunciation over time. Masculine. And it even has the little E on the end and everything. That's so weird. I never noticed that before. It should be Pesto or something. Okay, not this, the other thing. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, here. Um, Going through this in kind of a wonky order, but oh well, you get it. To, pata, this one doesn't survive. I think this one survives as shesha. Could be wrong about that. Might want to double check. Uh, this one definitely survives. Kas. Mm. This one, no exact match. Shoshen. Um, this one again, I mean, we have the name Asa and things like that, but Really no perfectly precise match for that that I know of. Uh, this we can kind of reconstruct it from word um, like wasahne. We have it preserved in that compound verb form. Uh, this one is easy. Sofa. This I guess is how we want to write it. Yeah. Um, sop. Sop. Yes. Sop. She, uh, yeah, good job. All right, keep going. Aurelio, tell me more. Okay, Pachat. Nice. Chof. Yep. This one, I don't know, probably Hoine or something. Na Hoine. Oh, Hoine has an M. Interesting. Rompe. Uh, na Rompewe, I guess. I'm not sure if it has a plural form. Yeah, that, I, that I don't know. That's one of those words that you can see having a plural. Yeah. Um, none comes to mind. And it may not be. I probably remember wrong. No, Rumpowe. Indeed. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Rumpowe. Rumpowe. Okay. Good. Um, nah. But like this? Rumpowe. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, without the full, it doesn't take the full Omicron, I think. Something like there that. Pre. Mm -hmm. This one, I don't know. Does that survive? Panau? Panau, at now or something? Sounds right, right? Yeah, it does. I'm not sure. Um, I'm really, I'm supposed to look sounds, all these things up. Sounds in so real. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it definitely Ooh. does. I couldn't tell. I was like, did I make it up just now in my uh, head? Uh, Umro. 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 Yeah. That's it. That's it. Okay. Well done, us. I'm not going to keep doing this because it keeps crashing. But this is good. This is a pretty good chart. Um, and you even have some. So, for all those people that say that Coptic is not Egyptian, um, no, it is. Who says that? Who would say oh. such a thing? Go into certain certain circles, and that comes up a lot. It's uh, it's it's supposed to be Greek because it's written in Greek. I don't want to go down that path right now. Sorry, it just yeah. No, I'm gonna leave that one. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let that one lie. 
Because yeah. uh, that's, yeah, that's, I didn't even know anyone thought that. It makes no sense. Okay, so we, we have um, articles and nouns and we're ready to get to, um, we're gonna start making sentences here pretty quick. We're, we're, we almost have enough to make sentences. So the very next thing we need, and you can kind of tell I'm like, it would not be correct to say I'm racing toward anything. Uh, if you've been in this class the whole time, you can tell that I'm not really the sort to get in a hurry to get to any sort of destination, but I am pushing us in a way that will lead us to have fully functional sentences as soon as possible. The next thing that we need are prepositions. So everyone knows what a preposition is, maybe, in case you don't. Uh, prepositions express relationships. Um, so like one way to think of it is anything you can do with a box. I chose to imagine it. Uh, you imagine a cat, perhaps a cat named Ben Church. <laughs> she's gonna bite me for picking her up while she's sleeping. Here she is. Um, so imagine a cat named Ben Church and a box. And if, if it's this cat, uh, she's gonna be in that box. Uh, but she could also, she can walk around the box, she can run toward it or away from it. She may even meow about the box being closed. And then here we get a pretty abstract thing um, where the object of the preposition is actually this entire noun phrase. Doesn't matter. Uh, anytime you want to express any relationship between two things, the preposition is the thing that expresses the relationship. And it's kind of this thing where um, it is that by definition, right? We've defined it that way. Uh, any word that expresses a relationship is a preposition. But then you have this ni nice quality that things defined this way behave a certain way grammatically. Uh, so it is a meaningful term. It's a meaningful uh, group of words, or it's it's a it's a valid part of speech. It's really useful for talking about grammar. We really don't have a great word for these things other than preposition, which is just the Latin for like placed in front of, because they're in front of a of a noun phrase. And yeah, that's what it means. Uh, interestingly, the the rule that you should never in, end a sentence in a preposition is because of this the Latin etymology of the word. That's where that rule comes from. It's not really a rule that applies to English grammar at all. It's just a prescriptive sort of rule that was made up because the word preposition means placed in front of. So how can you end a sentence with a preposition? Then it wouldn't be placed in front of anything anymore. Then it wouldn't be a preposition. That's obviously not how anything works, but some English teachers really got on board with that for some reason. Um, has everyone heard that quote? I think it's Churchill. He said, grammar is something up with which we should never put. It's pretty good. Maybe I just made it up, I don't know. Okay, but so as simple as they are to define and understand, they're maybe the most difficult vocabulary items to learn because you can almost never um, directly transfer the meaning of one preposition in one language to another language. So what's actually happening is we have this entire like, you know, complex array of different possible relationships. And then the prepositions in a language group them together around a single label. So, you know, um, in English, we use the word with to describe um, the manner in which you do something. We use it to describe like accompaniments if you, you know, if you go to dinner with a friend that's with, um, but you can build a house with a hammer or you can um, um, do something with a plum, either like with a plum, literally, or with a plum. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> any of these meanings, they all get, they all get uh, wrapped up under with, even though they're really quite different relationships if you actually sit down and analyze them. English speakers often think of them as being similar in some way, whereas speakers of another language who assign totally different words to those things might not see the similarity between them at all. They might divide them up, you know, they divide the space up totally differently. Um, and we see this even between, so I use the examples of like Spanish por qué and para qué, where if, you know, for an English speaker, just translating, it just means for what and for what. It's kind of hard to say what the difference is, but in Spanish, those are totally different words. Um, questions in the chat. English prepositions are still a mystery. Um, Claudia, do you mean that you want me to explain what a preposition is again? Or do you mean that they're just still, 
are you telling us that they're still baffling? No, no, no. Thank you. It's just the the, the way they are used, the um, how they are used. It's something that at times escapes me. But I know what the proposition is. Thank you. Yeah, um, me too. I find that, especially because I spend so much time speaking to non-native English speakers, I find myself using the wrong preposition. I'll, I'll hear myself doing it and go back and correct it. Um, because yeah, they're just kind of arbitrary and you can very easily, you know, you can hear someone use a preposition in a different way and start using it that way without really even meaning to. And in fact, like, in, you know, we do this, like English has changed and there are ways in which we use prepositions. Um, let me think of an example. Um, so some people, some dialects of English say that food tastes of a flavor whereas American English says that it tastes like a flavor. Um, where we're at is another one. That at is kind of new, kind of popped into that. So yeah, these things are very flexible. Um, you know, this is a great example where you can't literally translate. This is an example where if you do literally translate, you get nonsense, so cafe au lait. Everybody knows what a cafe au lait is, but um, if you were to literally translate it coffee to the milk, uh, it doesn't make any sense. I guess it does. Yeah, but it doesn't really doesn't really convey the meaning properly. Um, so what we do instead is we really want to translate prepositions loosely. Um, the key thing to know here, the reason that I'm telling you this now is I'm going to give you some definitions of prepositions, and I want you to learn them without sort of carving them into stone. Um, so you know, if we if you learn these later and we see an example where it it doesn't use any single one of these definitions, it's like no, that's not a problem. That's just it's hard to to find a suitable set that sort of explains what something is, as opposed to Leo Cafe, which would actually have coffee in it. Excellent. Um, well, okay. So what we're really doing here when we do this is we're taking the entire phrase, we're understanding what it means in the original language. So we're, we are uh, creating a mental model of what it describes. So you're actually somewhere in your brain, you're visualizing this relationship. If I say the cat is in the box, somewhere in your head, there is some kind of picture of a cat being in a box. Uh, your cat probably looks different from my cat, um, but you know, it doesn't matter. You have some kind of mental construct that represents that phrase. And then you're, you're taking that mental construct and reconstructing it in English as though you had thought of it originally. That's really proper translation. And you have to do that with prepositions uh, just because they don't map easily. So you can't translate word for word and get a meaningful sentence out of it. You have to be more thoughtful. Um, and then the, the last thing, I'm gonna give you these, we're gonna learn them, but again, don't, don't carve them into stone, uh, especially this one. It will drive you crazy if you think that it means in, with, <laughs> and from. And then every single time you go through that list saying like, which one of these should I select for my translation? No, that will, um, that will, that will definitely throw you off. Um, and so and there's, there's another thing. So this thing with from where, where Egyptian doesn't really have a word that means from. Um, if you come out from the house in Egyptian, you come out in the house and it just means you were in the house and you came out. Um, there isn't really an equivalent of the word from. So saying that M means from is just kind of a, it's a kludge. It's like we, you know, we need to get that idea across somehow, but don't know how to do it. Okay, let's transcribe these. So Aurelio has already done more than enough for today. I need to pick on someone else. Um, who am I going to pick? I could try. On? Dante. Okay, he volunteers to be picked on. Uh, is that Ewed? Ewed. Nice. Make sure it's typing. Oops. Yeah, there we go. Ewed. Then just M. M. That one's easy. N. N. Okay, why have I put these in here twice? Why didn't I just make one entry and say of comma for? Is it because the pre pronominal uh, translate in different ways? Yeah, so these are actually separate lexemes in Egyptian. And we know that because once we start combining them with pronouns, 
which we're not going to do today. We're going to do it at some later point. Uh, you'll, you'll see that they are distinctly different words because uh, they combine with other things differently. So yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, Bach. Yeah. Bach. Then uh, Msa. Yeah. Uh, M D U. Good. Nim. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna write it like this because I I believe it's a combination of two things. Uh, I think mm. it's one of these things where Egyptian like writes it one way the way it used to be and then writes it the other way to correct it or something. I don't think it was actually pronounced in in but whatever. Uh, then R. Or M. And her. Yeah. Good. Okay, and you can see all the Coptic. These are just the pre-nominal forms for obvious reasons. We're only creating prepositional phrases with nouns in them. But uh, Egyptian constructs many prepositional phrases that contain nouns in much the same way that English does, which makes this aspect of grammar easy to learn. In this situation, at least, there's no need to overthink it. But here are a few quick examples to illustrate. So who wants to uh, transcribe and translate these ones? Rasmus, you look like you're speaking. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was put to myself, but I can do try the first one, even if I am a bit ill, so I haven't been preparing. But so that goes M pa uh, a pair, pa a pair. M pa pair. And what does that mean, M pa pair? Uh, in this house or in the house, depending yeah. on the states of language you're looking at. Yeah, in the house. Okay. Uh, I can try the next one as well. So that's you can try it. Do uh, or do not. Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Um, so that's n m pi tef pi tef. Just yeah. eat that. Um, oh right. F is pi eat. Yeah. Tricky. So. Um, yeah, now I forgot im. Pa'it is the father, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this n n yem, just it's really just um, it's Coptic um, nem. Yep, it is. Oh, yeah. or men, men or nem. So who or any or each? That would be behind. Oh, you're thinking of uh, neem. This oh yeah, is... sorry. Uh, and it looks like Neem. I mean, it looks like it spells Neem, but it's actually um, this this one. Yeah. Men, like uh, the word that means and in Coptic, basically. All right. Yes. Okay. But it's just with. And this one expresses uh, accompaniment, and this one expresses something like possession. So that's they're mm. both with, because that's the best word to translate them. But they actually have d different meanings in Egyptian. They're totally and different. so the reason this pa means my instead of just the is that it's written with a retief. Or Oh, no, that's because I'm an idiot and I just wrote okay. it wrong. It should be with the father. I think I said it out loud, pi eat, and I heard like pi yot. Hmm. It's because I'm too good at Coptic that I made that yeah, mistake, that's really. Nice. That's, that's why I make mistakes. I'm just too good at it. it yeah. When you wrote that, I thought the F was the was going to be the um, suffix. I'm It'd sorry. be his father anyway, not my father, right? <laughs> yeah. It was a suffix. I was thinking of that too. I was thinking of all of these things, and it's just when you think of too much, it's you know bound, bound to cause mistakes. You want to do more, Rasmus? No, let someone else do the rest. Okay. Um, Kathy, you want to do these? You're saying sure. Sure, sure. Okay. I just can't remember hardly any of my like triliterals at all. That's fine. I'll tell you what they are. Um, um uh, I don't. I'll tell. This one's tough to remember. I'll tell you. It's ba. Yes, yeah, ba. Oh, God, something. I forget what the scroll is. The scroll is a classifier. Is it like a classifier in this? Okay. Yeah. Do All we, right. Did I put that in the vocab list? No, you don't necessarily need it in this word, honestly. But okay. It's a That's fine. Um, ta nature. Yeah. Natureth. 
Yeah, Nasrat. Good. Nasrat. Um, I'm not sure what the meaning is there, though. Uh, so oh. imba is in the presence of, mm. which is the best. I just want presence. Oh, good. In the presence of ta netret. Okay. The netret. The goddess. Okay. Yeah. In the presence of the goddess. It's it's been a while since I've gone through <laughs> my okay. vocab. Um, no worries. Let's see. Is it hair or yeah? Yeah. Um, pa Itaru. Good. Um, I'll tell you, we just had something about the river. Upon... Something about the river upon the. Yeah, that's it. Upon the river. Okay, that looks good. Uh, thank you very much for struggling through that. I know that's kind of a <laughs> yeah. pain, but yeah, it, do, it doesn't okay. hurt anything. No. Okay, so that was our prepositional phrase. I just gave a few examples to illustrate the fact that it works the same way. And that's really all you need to know. Um, Egyptian language, I don't like this sentence. Egyptian, I just don't like it. Egyptian language also contains adverbs. Doesn't sound good, whatever. Uh, however, fewer than we might expect and not always the same ones. Uh, interestingly, to say things like in the morning, um, Egyptian has an adverb you basically just say the word morning, but you, you say um, like, I did it morningly or something like that, or I did it eveningly. So Egyptian uses adverbs nightly. sort of differently. Oh, we would say nightly. Yeah, but we wouldn't say morningly. Um, so yeah, they're kind of in, they're in different places sometimes, but these are the most basic ones and they're the ones that appear um, right away in the text that we're reading. So let's see, I need to pick on someone else. Um, Aurora, do you want to transliterate these? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Im, and then uh, Rehe. Yeah. And uh, what, just a D, D? Yeah, it's just D. I think sometimes it's written D like this, maybe. Um, yeah, and we know like Coptic, it's Dai, so. Dai. Okay. Makes sense that it would be written that way. Uh, I need to fix this formatting. Okay. Is the is it a late Egyptian uh, correspondence uh, to the uh, Middle Egyptian ah uh -uh is also a verb. That that actually does survive into late Egyptian too, though. Uh, I think it's written ai uh, with a with an extra with extra stuff. I think it has two reed leaves on it or something, but it does survive. Uh, so you have both, but this is, I think it's actually a case of dialect where um, late Egyptian is like the Southern dialect and middle Egyptian was a Northern dialect. Um, and then there's this funny thing that happens where a lot of D's and I's interchange between those two. Um, so this is probably, this is probably something like we could imagine um, that it was something like this, and the other one was Ein Aleph. And um, so there's there's a weird, like very old etymological connection between Ein and D. Uh, probably why the uh, the word D to give um, is is written the way that it is with this with the same the Ein hand. Uh, there's probably some kind of deep connection between those two. We don't know exactly what it is, but there clearly is. There's a lot of weird uh, sort of correlations that shouldn't exist if there weren't some kind of connection. There. Partly connected. It is hardly, hardly uh, barely uh, connected. Barely, connected. yeah, very, very thin. It's just enough to give us kind of an inkling that there might be something there, uh, but we don't know specifically what it is. Um, okay, so uh, key thing to learn, and really the last thing we're going to learn. Okay, so this is as far as we go. So for the purposes of grammar, Egyptian treats adverbs and prepositional phrases as identical entities, and there is logic to this. Instead of a sentence says, I saw him here, and I saw him in this place, 
Uh, the meaning is largely identical, though there may be different emphasis or implication. And the function of the adverb here and the prepositional phrase in this place is grammatically identical. And that's really the key thing. So um, when we're talking about Egyptian grammar, we'll, we'll often take this functionalist approach where we identify things according to how they function in a sentence. And for adverbs and prepositional phrases, as far as grammar is concerned, they, uh, they function identically. And in Egyptian, they especially function identically. We even have, uh, you have plenty of cases where um, things that were prepositional phrases uh, become adverbs and we have the other way. No, I don't think it ever goes the other way around because you'd have to take something out of it. But yeah, prepositional phrases often kind of get stuck together. So this phrase that we had as a high before uh, upward is actually uh, toward. So it's just a preposition toward er plus um, something like heri, that which is above. So toward that which is above or toward the highness uh, upward. We can tell that it's middle Egyptian because it has no article on the noun. Uh, so it's definitely an older form that's become kind of fused together and has become essentially a late Egyptian adverb. Um, so yeah, so this is the last thing to learn. Prepositional phrase equals adverb. Think of it that way. Uh, it's become going to become very important when we start doing sentences with adverbial predicate, uh, which I started, I think I started writing. Oh, I must have closed it, uh, but I haven't written yet. So I guess that's Christmas break. Write some sentences with adverbial predicates. Uh, you already have an idea of what that means, but it's going to be interesting because Egyptian sentences, uh, Egyptian chooses the grammar based on what type of sentence, right? So there's four main sentence types. First one we're gonna learn are adverbial sentences. They are, they are very easy uh, because they're just noun plus prepositional phrase. So to give you like a preview, you could say, Something like pod image, em pop her, the man is in the house. This equivalent of Coptic pro me and pay, the man is in the house, right? So it's the sentences you see in chapter one of Lambda, all of those, like the stone is on the road, those type of sentences. Uh, but you don't need any kind of to be verb in Egyptian. So you can just construct an adverbial sentence with subject plus a prepositional phrase or an adverb as your predicate. So we'll practice those when we come back. Uh, no class next week or the week after because we have Christmas and New Year's one after another. Um, so I won't see y'all until, is it January 8th? Is that how the math works on that? It would be one, so it's, yeah, eight. Uh, so yeah, I'll see y'all again on January 8th. So everyone um, have wonderful holidays, however you celebrate them. And uh, I'll see y'all again in the new year. Are there office hours? Oh, yeah, 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 there are yeah. office hours tomorrow. Um, and I'll, we'll talk tomorrow about uh, when we should have them over the holidays. Uh, it's, it's up to you guys, really. I'll, I'll be at home. So, yeah. Okay. See you all tomorrow. See you one, one year later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah have a good right. holiday. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.